Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered how much water is there inside a cloud? There are many types of cloud and each one is a different size, so obviously they weigh slightly different. So let's look at your classic white fluffy cumulus. Scientists have actually measured the water density of these clouds and in one cubic meter of cloud, which is about this much, there is just a quarter of a gram of water, which is about this much. And the average cumulus is roughly cubic in shape, typically around one kilometer wide, tall and long, which gives this hypothetical cloud a volume of one billion cubic meters. With some basic arithmetic, therefore, we can work out that our cloud holds 250 metric tons of water, but that would fill just 10% of an Olympic sized swimming pool. So what about a bigger storm cloud? What about a hurricane? How much water is in one of those? Well, they are huge and have a much higher water density. So much so that their average water content has been estimated at 50,000 metric tons. That's enough water to fill 20 Olympic sized swimming pools. So how does a cloud float when it's full of so much water? Well, inside our regular fluffy cumulus cloud, the water is spread out into minuscule droplets that measure just a few thousandths of a millimetre across. Each one weighs very little, so they fall down extremely slowly. In fact, your average cloud droplet falls at 0.03 kilometres per hour, meaning it would take 33 hours to fall just one kilometre. On top of that, atmospheric updrafts actually counteract this slow downward movement, and so the cloud and tiny water droplets are kept aloft. These updrafts are actually crucial for the formation of clouds. Rising air expands and cools as the pressure decreases, and eventually it cools enough for the water vapour in the air to condense, and so a cloud is born. In fact, the rising air currents don't just conceive a cloud and keep it aloft, they help to dictate the size of the raindrops. In a light updraft, tiny droplets are just heavy enough to fall gently to the ground, and this creates a hazy, light kind of rain shower. But a stronger updraft keeps the water droplets up in the clouds for longer, so they have more time to bump into each other. They unite, coalesce, and make bigger raindrops. Eventually, they become so big that the updraft can no longer support their weight, so they fall as giant raindrops. But it doesn't end there. Even as they fall, a turbulent gust of air can blow them back up into the cloud, where they bounce around into even more raindrops and get even bigger. The longer a raindrop falls, the more likely it is to get blown back up into a cloud or into another drop. So it's thought that the higher clouds produce bigger raindrops. Please share this video with your friends and subscribe to Earth Unplugged for more awesome videos. See you next time. Have you ever considered how much water there is? We think of our planet as a watery place, the blue planet. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, and in fact, water is unique as the only natural compound that occurs in all three states. We're going to be looking at some mesmerizing physics, droplets bouncing.